Prater in the ball game, Idaho sports talk. We said five o'clock was going to be real today. And uh, yeah, it's going to be real. And it's happening right now in the rowpaint.com studio. We are joined. This is a bad man. He's hungry, probably hungrier than he's ever been before. Let's welcome Boise State receiver Latrell Caples to the rowpaint.com studio yes, sir, yes, and sir. Idaho sports talk. Caples. I hope you're ready for this. Welcome, man. How are you today, Trell? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me. I, I love this whole thing already. You do, man? Yeah. Prater, they love the studio, man. They love the clubhouse. Now, he, he came in, and we were wondering if it was going to be funny, because we've met him before in group interviews, and you're a pro. And, and you business. do the pro. You're all business. And we thought maybe we bring these guys in. We have some entertainment. And we were talking this morning about your personality. The first thing, he walks in, and he notices my little football that I like to play with here. <laughs> And he called it the Tom Brady football. And I'm assuming it's not because of the brand, but I'm assuming because it's a deflated. little deflated. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, Tom Brady deflate game joke. Nice. I thought he was going to Terrell Owens it, grab it real quick, <laughs> autograph it, and toss it back to you, Prater. Um, Trell, Tr- we got a bunch of stuff we want to talk to you about. But I want to start you off with kind of kind of the news of the day. We've been talking about it all day here on Idaho Sports Talk, and that is the Buffalo Bills trading Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans. You know, Gabe Davis isn't there either. Your boy, you're one of your best friends. Khalil Shakir is going to get a massive opportunity to move his way up the depth chart. What, what, what are your thoughts? Would you, you shoot him a text today congratulating him? Just trail like, it looks like, you know, Khalil Shakir might be moving up a little bit. Yeah, uh, I did see it today. Uh, Davis talked about it in the locker room because uh, Chris Marshall is a big Texas fan. Okay. And, you know, now they got, they got so many weapons now. It's crazy. But um, I feel like it's big for Shaq because – He's stepping up in the in the number one role immediately, and for Diggs, I mean that's that's personally that's my favorite receiver in the league. Okay, I think he's the best receiver in the league. But um, I I, I kind of like the move though because now Shaq is he's the guy. Absolutely, you know. Uh, so want to get your thoughts on that. Um, we 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 were talking earlier. We did have a segment about if he's ready, and we had mixed. I mean, we we know that his career's tri- trending up. We know that he works his butt off more than anybody that I remember in a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And he's going to get there. Is 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 he ready right now? Because some of the subjects, some of the people out there are talking about maybe the Bills going off and getting a wide receiver in the first round, which would be fine too. Yeah. Because that's going to take some time for him to develop. Do you see Shaq evol- evolving even right now into a wide receiver number one in the National Football League? I mean, I've seen Shaq do some crazy stuff, so I honestly believe he could do it in the way he works, the way he comes in every day, and then he was a leader here. I feel like he leads himself very well, first and foremost. So I think if he, I mean, if he's able to go there and really, really have a move on it, it's going to be cool. Because even if they do go first round, I mean, I don't feel like that first rounder would be better than Shaq right now, honestly, right. with the experience and the people he's played with. But it's always good to have help right now. So I feel like they definitely go get somebody. And what did you learn from Khalil Shakir? I'm sure he was an inspiration to you and every other receiver that had the opportunity to play for him, it, play with him at mm-hmm. BSU. Yeah, no. Uh, with Shaq, I mean, he was a leader guy. He was he was a leader in the room, and he was one of those guys that just go about his business. Mm-hmm. So that's what I learned from him because, you know, he didn't really have to talk as much. He didn't really have to go out and say, oh, I'm the best or, uh, like, show it that much. But you just could tell by the way he moved around, the way he carried himself, that he was a leader and he was a dude. So that's really what I learned from him, just being able to lay low that, that part of leadership, just being a lay low guy, not always the rah-rah guy, even though sometimes you have to be the rah-rah guy. But that, <laughs> okay. that's just what I learned from him, to be honest. The big question for you then, and we'll get this one out of the way because we want to dive into way more important details because I know you got a football season and an off season and a spring ball and everything. But ultimately, I'm assuming the answer is yes, that you envision yourself in the NFL. You want to follow that path. And once you get done with college football, Latrell Caples is playing in the NFL somewhere. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like growing up, everybody has their dreams, especially coming from from where I come from. You know, it's not always a high percent chance that happens. I mean, we have super athletes come out of, the Dallas area all the time, but it mm-hmm. doesn't always mean they'll go all the way far. So it's been a dream for, for me for a minute. And honestly, I'm just going to keep working to get there, keep working to stay healthy so I can be there one day. Nobody's hungrier than Latrell Caples right now to get back and eat some blue turf. But before that, Trell, uh, it was your mother's birthday, yes, we sir. found out. Take us through last year in the month of June where – uh, you tore your Achilles and missed the entire season. Oh, yeah, we're going to get sad. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Us too. Us too. We missed yeah, yeah, you yeah. all season long. Mom's but, birthday. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, uh, we were just out there 
regular Monday off a weekend after the first week. And, you know, you just wake up, you think it's another workout day. You you think, you know, when you're not getting this one back, but you don't go out there thinking that one. So you just go out there, I'm working out, boom, we do a drill, just pop. You don't, you never, like at the time, I didn't know what was going on. Like in the moment, I thought someone may have dropped a water bottle by my foot. because. Yeah, everybody says that because the Achilles is weird and I never knew it like that. So it was like I thought someone threw something at my foot. I'm like, Ugh. I look back. I'm like, what, what's going on? Yeah. And then I couldn't get up. So I'm like, oh, wow. And then when I found out when I seen it was the back of my foot, I was just like, no way. And then I go in the training room, you know, just you just go in there and you just you just shake your head. I'm yeah. sitting in the training room. First person to come in was Rod he in there crying with me. The JC come in there. It was just, it was real emotional at the time. And then Bush came in there. He was in there crying. Miller was in there. It was just sad because it was like in that moment, you knew exactly what it was. Yeah. So it was like, it's no rehab and this. Hopefully you'll come back in time. Like it was just sad. And then it's my mom's birthday, like I said. So, but the first person I, I couldn't bring that to my mom, like first thing. So the first person I called was my aunt. That's who I usually call for like emotional, emotional trauma Support, or something. Yeah. yeah. So I just, I went to her, I was just bawling my eyes out. Like I, mm -hmm. I never thought I could cry like that, but it was, it was just a, it was a bad time. So I called her first. I tell her about it. She's just telling me to calm down, calm down. But it's like, you know, you work so hard and then coming off a season like that, it's like, oh, I'm ready. Like I'm hungry. The season you I, had two years ago? Yeah. yeah I, I was hungry then. So like, I'm, I'm even hungrier now. So if guy, if this guy's plan, I'll continue to work, but back to the story i was like talking to her and then i was just like yeah like she calming me down but it's just it just didn't it just it just didn't get any better then i ended up calling my mom once i got home like probably three hours later and was just telling her about it trying not to cry to her because it's her birthday so it was just just talking to her and then like a bunch more people called me but um it was like that then the day of the surgery was two days later june 7th then I go home then, and then a bunch of people call me. But the person that called me, I'm not, I mean, the person yeah. that called me, Who? Um, that really, 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 like, changed my perspective was Coach D. Like, he he talked to me, and it was just like, like, I was on the phone with my mom before he called me, but I just, something told me to just answer the phone for him. And he was just talking to me, and I was just crying to him. And I'm like, I'm why am I crying to a coach right now? Like, I don't, I don't think <laughs> the I was defensive coordinator yeah, of all coaches. Like me, me and Coach D, we were always like, we were always cool. We was always like good, good. He always, what's up, Trail? Like, you know, but as a defensive coordinator, he didn't talk to me as much. But but it, we it was always, it was always good love there. It wasn't like, oh, I don't, I don't mess with Trail, but it was, it was, <laughs> it, was it was like it was always that. And then when he called me, something just clicked for me to cry. Like, I don't know why he wow. was just he was just talking to me and he was just the way he was the things he was saying like I don't want to go too in deep with our conversation but sure. it was a, it was one that touched me for real and another one was my high school receiver coach um he he called me and it was it was another emotional wreck because he worked I feel like he molded me the most into the person into the player that I became like coming into college so it was just talking to him and talking to those two it was just those were the ones that touched the most but He's Latrell Caples, former, or not former, current Boise State wide receiver, wide receiver number one, as we put labels on wide receivers these days. You know, you talked last week when you had your media uh, uh, opportunity, you talked about depression, mm -hmm. and they say rehab is the loneliest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, how lonely was your rehab? Because your boys were playing football. And when did you kick out of that rep depression, and how did you get yourself out of that funk? Um for the first about two weeks, it was it was really bad. I mean, I wouldn't even come into the facility unless it was check on a scab. But if I did that, I would I would lift myself right back to the house. Like I didn't want to be around football at all. Like yeah. it, it felt bad. Like it felt like if I watched it, it was just it was just like ah, like you'll feel it every time. So, but the part about being lonely, honestly, once once a month passed and I was in there with Garrett and it was more guys in there that was going through the same thing as me. It, it really made me feel not alone. Like okay. it's, it was a lot of people in there. Uh, it was like guys like JJ Tallo, guys like Ben Ford was in there with me. Um, it was a bunch more guys. And then Garrett, our trainer, uh, he just got the head job. Congratulations to him. But he, it was him the most that kept me in there because it was days I come in there and I'm like, man, I just, 
I don't even know if I want to be there, but he for sure, Garrett, Garrett and the guys in there for sure uh, brought me out of the loneliness. Prater, we might have a Latrell Caples sandwich in the studio <laughs> because I'm thinking me and you just want to group hug this guy. <laughs> it's just Captain Man, just Latrell. What a story. This is why you listen to Idaho Sports Talk interviews like Latrell Caples in studio. Just quickly, Trell, you 100% healthy now or are you still working to be there by fall camp? Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm healthy enough to be yeah. playing right now. So I feel like I'm good. I mean, it's date tomorrow will be day eight of spring ball. So I don't feel like I don't think nobody feels like perfectly fine. So yeah. but I'm healthy enough to go practice tomorrow and be able to finish the spring ball for sure. I'll be there. Can't wait to watch it. We got a bunch of stuff we want to hit you with now, Latrell I'm Caples. I'm going to start. You flourished under Dirk Cutter two years ago. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden he's back. Why is Dirk Cutter so good for Latrell Caples? Uh, I believe he just I was just talking to talking about it with uh Bob out there about how his plays are tailored to the personnel because he knows exactly who he has on his team and he knows how to use it use it so I feel like that's the biggest part for me and any skilled guy that wants the ball on the offense like if you want the ball you got to show them that you have a certain specific skill set to put you in use for the for the ball what about the punt return kick returns maybe even mostly punt returns you know we know you did that before uh we've seen you at practice the last yep. couple of weeks doing a lot of that uh, we spent a lot of time on this show talking and deciphering about what happened with special teams last year and the fact that they were not productive as the Boise State standard is. Uh, is the plan for you to come in with this 100% returner mentality, take over that position and, and be a returner? Is that an important part of what you do? Yes, that's a very important part. I actually have a goal I set for touchdowns this year. So that's a very important part of my game because special teams is is another is another point of the game. So if you want to, like you was talking about earlier, if I want to make it to the league, I got to show that I can do something on special teams. So, Cobb, Cobb's in Dallas with yeah. the Cowboys the yeah, other day. Exactly. So things like that, like just going out there and taking special teams seriously and actually talking to the guys. Like it's an offensive huddle. Like offensive huddle, I want to touch everybody. So punt return, I need to go out there and touch every block for me, block for me. Because, you know, that just encourages guys. It makes them want to do it more. So nice. yeah. it's like, Make you sure know. you're right next to Stacey Collins. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> his <laughs> decision. Sure. If anybody wants to call in and maybe congratulate Latrell on his rehab or wish him well, if you want to ask Latrell Caples a football rehab type of question, call 208-424-9300. JP, be tough on the screen and you guys call. And if JP puts you through, we'll let you talk to Latrell Caples for a couple minutes. Cam Ooh. Camper, the Indiana transfer, mm -hmm. dude. You played with him in high school. Yeah. How good is he? And what do you see his role being in an already packed receiver room? Uh, he's he's a dude. Like, is he? Yeah, he's a guy. Him and Chris Marshall, honestly. But yeah, to talk about Cam, if you wanted to get a comparison, I give you T Higgins. You have a guy like Ooh. T Higgins on the field. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's where I'm gonna go. But growing up in high school, I mean, he wasn't he was not, he wasn't that tall. If you believe it or not, he got a growth spurt. Lucky. After football season, his senior year. Wow, that's why <laughs> so, it was JC. Exactly. He 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 ended up playing basketball. He finished playing basketball. He was he is a good hooper too, but he ended up playing basketball. He went to Sam Houston at first. I actually forgot this till he talked about it. Uh, he told me about it. We was talking about it the other day. I was like, I just forgot. Then he went, like you said, to JC for two years. Um, balled out there. I think he was like number four receiver in JUCO. So it was like. And then he ended up – He at first he was committed to New Mexico. I, you shook your head on that? You don't want to go there? I'm not even going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop there. Let me stop there. All right, all right. But he decommitted from there, and then he was thinking about UCF. Then ultimately he, he picked Indiana, which was, I felt like, a great fit for mm -hmm. him. He got there right when Michael Penix left. I felt bad for him. <laughs> but he got there, and he did his thing, so – I was just proud to see like that growth from him, like from all all the stuff he had to go through. Cause me, I'm straight out of high school, Division One. Him, he had to bounce like three, four schools and yeah. get to the point. He was a top ten, big top ten, big ten receiver, in my opinion, both years. So it just it's just great to see, honestly. Caples. Bolt, Strawn, Marshall, Camper. I mean, I'm just throwing out a couple of the of the obvious names when it comes to this wide receiver room. If you guys stay healthy and if Dirk Cutter works his magic and they can figure out what to do at quarterback, I got a quarterback question here for you as well, but uh, that could be historic in terms of wide receiver room at Boise State. Do you guys start to get that feeling that this is a special wide receiver group and how are you going to get 
how, how are you going to feed so many faces? Because you guys all want a hundred balls this year. Mm-hmm. No, it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. We think about. We don't really compare ourselves because you know that's not what you want to do. You don't want to compare yourselves to other teams. But we honestly, we just want to get better every day because you know, to me, and to I feel like some of the guys in the room last year, the receiver room was the laughing stock of the team. Me personally. Wow. I mean. So we just coming in hungry every day trying to prove that wrong. And I can't wait till everybody gets back because it's even going to be more – it's going to be a problem for even more teams. Coach so, Caples, Coach Caples, what was your issue with the, with the wide receiver room last year? Uh, play, <laughs> just making plays, like, some yeah. from time to time. Like, sometimes quarterbacks aren't always going to be on point. I mean, I got times where I blame a quarterback or something. But sometimes we just got to make a play and change the game. And I'm not trying to – like say we didn't do that enough a lot but we didn't do it enough for me so i because I, I just hold our room to a higher standard so and the guys that have been here in the past i'm pretty sure they they don't think the same they think the same thing so honestly like i said we're coming in there hungry trying to trying to just be better and get better every day and i feel like receiver rooms i've been in the past three years four years this is the most hungriest i've seen and most focused because they're not they're not they're not worried about what you said, like the hundred balls a game. Everybody mm-hmm. is literally coming in there and trying to work hard and just fight and be hungry. Like I haven't seen nobody out there just not looking like they don't want to be out there. Everybody is ready to practice. If they do, they're probably gonna get an earful from the leader of the room. Exactly. Latrell Caples. <laughs> you guys got a question for Latrell Caples, 208-424-9300. That's the number that you call. All right, Latrell, you got you got veteran quarterbacks, you have young quarterbacks. How does a veteran receiver help a young quarterback? You be there for him. Honestly, that's the first thing. Like, if he has a question, is he if he has a correction, if you have a correction, you be there for him because we're all still continuing to grow, honestly. So with our young quarterbacks in there, I mean, they know they still know more than us, honestly, because I feel like at a quarterback position, you got to know everything. Mm-hmm. When I go out there, I try to know what I do and – receivers on the field do just in case I'm in another position but with quarterbacks I feel like they already have to know more but so I'll just be there if they need anything honestly because those guys are all trying to get better every day and it's it's, it's fun to see Malachi Nelson's been on campus for a couple of months but you guys have already negotiated a nice little business deal we showed up on the first day of spring camp and you were no longer number seven mm-hmm. and uh, you were number three he was wearing number seven we found out last week that you guys made a little swap you gave him a number and uh, maybe got some shoes out of the deal. Kind of talk what? us through the art of the deal. How did you oh, how, business who, who, man? Who came to who, and how did this transaction come together? Actually, Bush came to me first because he didn't have my number. Uh, <laughs> but Bush <laughs> sent him my number eventually because Bush called me. He was just like, um, he's like, how does the number seven feel to you? Like, does it hold any sentiment value? And I was oh, like, Bush. I was like, no, nah, I really. He was like, well, Malachi's gonna give you a call or text in a minute about the number. And I was just like, I was thinking about it because. I was like, ah, all this stuff my my parents bought with the number seven on it. Like, <laughs> oh. I was thinking about stuff like that, but I was like, ultimately, it wasn't really about the number. It was about what he got me or what he gave me. I just feel like that's a, a that's a gesture in its own. Like, here you can have this. You know, you got to give me this stuff. <laughs> you have two years of eligibility left, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're gonna get last year back. You know, you're a Brian Harson recruit, so you go mm-hmm. back a ways. Um, if if the situation calls for it, Troll. You're perfectly willing, ready, and able to, to be a Bronco for two more years. If the situation calls for it. You're trying to get to the league in a year, though. Yes, sir. That's yeah. the that's always the plan for sure. I like that. I like that. Is that the yeah. answer we expected? I, I do like that. So, Although I, mean, I would imagine fans wouldn't mind two years, but uh, have a monster year this year and get out of here, and we, we would love that. Away from football, let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. um, I did some stalking today. I, I did some social media <laughs> creeping, and, uh, and uh, you're a big music guy. You're a big NBA guy, I think. Okay. Uh, you were talking about somebody the other day with a vicious dunk. I'm not sure who you were talking about, but uh, what uh, what grabs your attention away from football? Uh, really, like you said, about other sports, honestly. I mean, sometimes as an athlete, you want to get out of the sports world when you come to your interest, but really not me. I, I, I pay attention to, like, uh, free agency like y'all do. Like, everything y'all talk about here, I'll probably talk about at the house. So nice. It's just – it's really anything that goes on in the world to me. Like today we were talking about who's better out of Angel Reese and Flage. Like we just talk mm-hmm. about anything. So interest wise, I mean, I played Madden a lot. I feel like I'm the best Madden player on the team. On the for team. Sure, for sure. So, I mean, a lot of stuff interests me. Games, 
uh going out movies for sure that doom 2 was, was i saw good. that you said it was um, one of your top 10 yeah, movies yeah, of yeah. all time yeah really. yeah doom 2 was doom 2 was one of the ones i i feel like like i said i i they need to pay me for promotion because i honestly <laughs> are you I, working I, on any nid nil deals now no nah, not right on. now not no? right now just, i gotta show i gotta show the people something first before you get anything like that so i feel like you gotta work to get stuff like who that. is your host when you when you came here on a visit cartrell thomas CT. Okay. It was it was CT Thomas because he went to your high school. Oh, so yeah, you guys had high school. It's CT yeah. and Tay Evans because oh. it was um me. Octavius Evans. Yeah, it was me and um Looper. Looper was here. He committed here, and then it was like he flipped once his once his dad went to Mizzou. So it was it was it was crazy. But yeah, we were both with him. We were both with CT and Tay. It was me and Looper, and I was out here for the Portland State game. I, I I never forget John Hightower. I think it was first kickoff return. Took like a break left and was gone. Yeah, and it was, I was like, wow. And then I think that was Static's first touchdown too. So it was a good game to go to. It was it was packed too for it to be Portland State. So it was a, it was a pretty fun game. Did you fall in love with Boise when you first came here? Or did you have to kind of work on that? Uh, no, I I really liked it because it was something different from where I was from. It was like mountains. It was like what what are the mountains doing here? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Never see mountains, and then the school is right downtown. I mean, I've seen that in like SMU, but it's not like as downtownish as this. So it was, it was real different, and I really, met, I really liked it because like how different it was. Dude, Bronco Nation is ready to see Latrell Caples from two years ago, but at a more advanced level. Trell, you're bigger than you've ever been. I've been at every practice. Mm -hmm. You've added a physicality standpoint to your game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you'll you abuse a smaller corner. I've seen it in practice. I love when you and the corners go John back and forth. It's my favorite oh, yeah. part of practice. But, I mean, we could do this just about all day, 208-424-9300 with Latrell Caples here. And uh, you got to be just absolutely fired up. Before we get you out of here, I mean – everybody's excited for this year. I know you are probably more than most, but uh, what, are, what are your goals as a team? What have you guys talked about that you want to get done this year? Um, there's a playoff, so my goal is to be able to compete for a national championship. I mean, I feel like we might as well strike now. It's new. The iron's hot. I mean, that's that's really where I'm at with it. I mean, we have a chance to come in and compete for a natty so that's where I, where i want this team to be jeremiah dickey made that a priority when he made the decision to move, make a change with coach avalos and uh so we know where he stands because he's publicly out there we talk about the cfp all the time on this show the fans do as well so you're saying that the, that the team embraces that goal talks about that goal and the cfp tournament one of those 12 teams and then winning some games is very much a priority within your family yeah our our goal is to win the Mountain West Conference Championship in a bowl game, and uh, we need to change it to multiple bowl games now that there's playoff. But we're definitely <laughs> right now we're definitely talking about things we can do with this team because we know how special we are. And but right now we have to continue to work to show it. I will see you practice tomorrow. Yes, sir. Who's the starting quarterback on the season opener? Ooh, that's a tough one. It all depends. Uh, whoever wins it in fall camp. Yep. Good answer. Yeah. You like catching balls. You like catching balls from all of them, huh? Yep, for Long sure. They're they're all good. They're all growing. I feel like we have a good problem going on. Hey, great job today. Yes, sir. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank y'all for having me. This that, is fun. I that. need to come back on here. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, that's why you listen to Idaho Sports Talk with Trell Caples in studio Prater in the ball game. From the Beacon Plumbing Traffic Studios, this is Ticket Traffic. A lot of